Hello, my name is Wade Nomura and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. Today we're going to take a look at one of the milestones, one of the milestones that Rotary has done, and this is the inclusion actually of having women join Rotary. It was something that definitely needed to be done to bring us into the 21st century, and one thing that I think has uh, definitely benefited our organization. With me today, I have the person I would consider most responsible for this, Sylvia Whitlock. Sylvia, welcome. Hi, Wade. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, let's start at the beginning. I, I was born in New York City. Uh, my parents didn't want their children growing up in New York City, so we went to Jamaica, where I grew up with my grandmother and stayed in Jamaica long enough to go through high school in Jamaica. Of course, that was earlier, because British schools, you're out of school at 15. Mm -hmm. So at 15, I went back to New York to go to college. Left Jamaica, went back to New York to go to college. Graduated from Hunter College in New York City. Then took a visit to, took a little trip to California and saw Bougainville and palm trees and knew that was where I wanted to be. <laughs> and so I moved to California in, oh, probably 1967. Okay. And I have been in California since then. Okay. Um, I went to college in California and got my master's at Cal Poly in Pomona. Then I went to Claremont Graduate School and got my doctorate. And um, in between there somewhere, Rotary came along. <laughs> so uh, that's what brought me here. Great. Now, what did you study in your profession, by the way, also? Okay. In, uh, actually, I was a pre-med major in, in our college. Right. But I was ahead, way ahead, and I had a whole year with nothing to do. And my advisor suggested I take education classes. And that sort of just channeled me into education. So when I came to California, I started to teach. My husband convinced me I needed to go and get my doctorate. So I went to Claremont Graduate School, got my doctorate. Then I went to Azusa Pacific University and got a my master's in marriage and family counseling. So I can, you know, I can <laughs> marriage and family counsel and teach you at the same time. <laughs> well, that's great. And so that's So that's medical, what I do. that was one extreme to another. You started in medical and then you went yeah. the other direction. Well, actually, I was a psych major because I wanted to be a psychologist. Oh, okay. That's a pre-med class because uh, you have to go Understood. through. So actually going back to get a master's in marriage and family counseling wasn't that far away from where I started. Ah, yeah. okay, good. So now let's, uh, let's hear a little bit about your uh, journey in Rotary. Okay, see that little sidetrack I took through education mm -hmm. took me to Duarte Unified School District as a principal, as a school principal, elementary okay. school principal. And as most principals do, you look around for things you can do for your community. Um, talking to my superintendent of schools, he said, oh, don't worry about it. We have a Rotary Club here in this community, and we are going to get women into Rotary. <laughs> and so there was already a woman who was invited, uh, Mary Lou Elliott, and he invited me to join the Rotary Club. Um, we had no idea what was going to happen. We joined the Rotary Club. He, you know, he checked it out with the district governor, and the district governor said, yeah, it's okay, just don't tell anybody there are women. <laughs> and he didn't. Okay. You know? okay. And so, um, Joining the Rotary Club for me was everything I needed to do to be a member of that community. Mm -hmm. And it really introduced me to humanitarian service, to serving other people, and made the world a much smaller place for me, easier to navigate, and brought a lot of joy, a lot of experience, a big sense of satisfaction from doing Rotary things. So he invited us to join Rotary. But of course, that was easier said than done. <laughs> Because Rotary said, we don't have women in Rotary. Mm -hmm. And so immediately, they, as soon as they found out there were women in Rotary, actually we were there for about four years, three when, years when before they found what, out. What year was that? That you actually joined? 1976. 1976. Okay. okay. And when Rotary found out that there were women in the Rotary Club, they said, we were celebrating an anniversary and we invited them to come. Ah, okay. And when the Rotarians were introduced, Rotary said, we don't have women in Rotary. And, and Dr. Key said, this club does. <laughs> and they thought to themselves, no, this club does not. So they went back to Evanston and really talked about it and decided that, you know, the Dwarney Club could ask the women to leave, hmm. you know. And it told them that you could either ask the women to leave or you can stop calling yourself a Rotary Club. Wow. 
And so uh, the Rotarians, the male Rotarians then, who knew how important the women were to that club, yeah. said, we want the women to stay. So you, they tried to appeal the case to the board of directors, but the board of directors wouldn't only listen to Rotary clubs. And if you have women, you're not a real Rotary club. Mm. So Evanston sent representatives to Doherty and they took the charter of the club. And so the men in the club said, we, we can fix this. We'll just put a big X over the Rotary insignia and we'll call ourselves the X-Rotary Club of Duarte. <laughs> right. And we were the X-Rotary Club of Duarte for 11 years. Wow, wow. So uh, another Rotarian, another really important Rotarian was Sanford Smith, who was a member of the Arcadia Club. And he said, you know, I think we can take this through the courts. And so we gave notice to Rotary that we, would, we were going to file a suit to keep the women in Rotary. And the first thing that Rotary did was pe petition that the suit not be heard in California court because it said not all Rotarians are Californians. Mm -hmm. The board of directors has people from all over. Right. But, the, but the court ruled that it would be heard okay. in California. So it went to California Superior Court and they said, Rotary's right. You don't have to have women in Rotary. You, you know, those women have to leave. And so we thought, because at first the issue was a membership issue and we weren't fighting civil rights, a civil rights issue, we probably didn't pay as much attention to it as we should have, so we lost that first round. And that Sanford got the help of the ACLU, you know, and they said, we can do this. And so they appealed to the California Appellate Court, and the California Appellate Court reversed that first decision mm. and said, yeah. But see, California has an act called the Unruh Act that says you can't discriminate in public accommodations. Right. And Rotary was a public accommodation. They were accommodating a lot of people for fellowship. It was a business deal. Rotary, in fact, at that time, probably about 80% of the Rotarians had their dues paid by their employers. Right. So it was, a, it was an accommodation. And so the appellate court said, sorry, you have to accept women in Rotary. I'm sorry, and they, they reversed the Superior Court's decision. So Rotary, every step of the way, said, no, we're not going to accept this. So they appealed to the California Supreme Court, and the California Supreme Court wouldn't hear the case. They said, no, we're satisfied with the appellate court's ruling, so they wouldn't hear the case. And um, then Rotary appealed to the United States, United States of America, the United <laughs> States Supreme Court. Yeah. And that's in a nutshell the story. Of course, it was 1987. It was 11 years later before the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that Rotary had to accept women. And then all service clubs had to accept mm. dual genders, both genders. So. That's great. So that, that finding actually reflects in almost all of the service organizations yes, in the all United of States. And, wow, all of them. That's, that's I've talked to Kiwanis and Sir Optimist yeah. and everybody else who had to have uh, both genders. And even now, you know, you can't start a club unless you agree to have right. both genders in the club. Exactly. So. so those 11 years, you were still functioning as a Rotary Club. Uh, I presume Duarte continued to grow, as did the club. Yeah, we functioned as a Rotary Club. We did, I mean, we did Thanksgiving baskets. We just passed Thanksgiving. We did Thanksgiving baskets. We did cancer baskets for families. We did stuff for schools. We started an orphanage in Mexico. We went down and did a lot of work. Uh, we did some dental work and some uh, health care work for children in Mexico in an orphanage. And we did everything. Mexico was close and we could do that. Mm -hmm. We did everything but big international projects because we didn't have Rotary's blessing, so we couldn't and, do and that. But, that we, yeah. Yeah. but we mm -hmm. did a lot of local projects. Yeah. Now, one of the fascinating stories you told me about was uh, your membership name as you joined Rotary before women were allowed. Tell the audience what your actual, actual name was as far as... Well, the, the, gov the governor of District 5300 said to Dick, when Dick said, can I get women in Rotary? He said, yes, but when you send their names in, just send in um, initials, you know? And so Dick sent in initials, nobody knew there were women. <laughs> However, when the, when the court said 
the California appellate court said that there were going to be women, um, that was the year that I was going to be president. So I went to Pets, you know, down in Garden Grove. I went to Pets and I heard them talking about this case and heard the district governor say, ah, oh, this is just going to be overruled and he's going to appeal this. It's just a case of the, you know, the mouse that roared because we were a small club. Mm -hmm. So we put, uh, we already had a banner with an X over it, we were the Ex-Rotary Club of Duarte. So on the bottom of the banner we just wrote, Ex-Rotary Club of Duarte, the mouse that roared. And that became our, our identification. I was no longer S. Whitlock, I was Sylvia Whitlock, so were Mary Lou was not M. L. Elliot, she was Mary Lou Elliot. So, you know, that's... That's how it sort of evolved, and now women everywhere can go right in, yeah. open. In fact, there's still one club in New Jersey that doesn't have women. Do hmm. you know that? No. And Rotary is threatening to take their charter. Isn't that interesting? That is interesting. Yeah. No, because that, they that was said, intentional. I became yeah, part of the Yeah, they said they cannot, find, they cannot find capable women. Ah, so we're thinking about transferring our membership there to see what they will say. <laughs> It's a good idea. Very good idea. Yeah. Now, um, as far as the club, I believe you said there was four of you uh, women as, as you yeah, started. Yeah, there were four this, of us. There was Mary Lou Elliott was a, a school principal. Uh, we had a, a journalist who was a member of the club. We had a psychologist, and I was principal. Okay. Another principal. Yeah, there were four of us. We're all eminently capable <laughs> of course of being Rotarians. <laughs> Without a doubt. Yes. And in that 11 years of, of the struggle, I would say, because it actually was a struggle, you kept the passion. You continued on the fight. Of Tell course. us why. You know, we were Rotarians. Yeah, That's what yeah. Rotarians do. We serve the community. And uh, a lot of us were in schools and, you know, this uh, uh, president was a superintendent of schools in Doherty. So there was, uh, there was a lot to be done in schools. And the fact that Rotary was fighting behind us because we didn't start this as a civil rights issue, that really never came to the surface. We just wanted to be Rotarians. Mm -hmm. The civil rights issue did come to the surface and that was, uh, that was what happened in the uh, Supreme Court because the idea that women should not have equal opportunities for things like service was not what the Supreme Court wanted to see and that was part of the decision. Uh, so. So what started out as a membership issue turned into a civil rights issue. And now when people look at it, that's what they see, the civil rights issue, the part of it, women's rights, right. you know, so. When actually yeah. you, the actual truth is you just wanted to be a Rotarian. We just wanted you, to be Rotarians. Do a Rotary does. You know, I can't think of anything else. <laughs> now it's been what, 87 has been 35 years probably. <laughs> um, since I first came in in 1976, and, and I'm thinking of all the things I've had the opportunity to do, all the things you want to do in a community, all the service opportunities that there are, that's what Rotary opened up to us. That's what Rotary opened up to me. I mean, I found a purpose for my life other than raising my kids and teaching school and doing <laughs> all that stuff in a world community, in a world community, I mean. You know, and I have gone back to Jamaica, which was where I started, and I didn't know anything about Rotary in Jamaica, but Rotary in Jamaica is a huge uh, organization now, and it's, um, Rotary, Rotary has facilitated that, and that is what is important to me now, is to keep the humanitarian service part of my life going. Now, as a role model, because you are truly a role model for Rotary, how do you see uh, women that are now in, in the organization? Um, are they fitting in? Has it changed for what you've seen the organization to be, or is it more or less the same? It's really interesting because you now for 30 years I've been talking about this, okay? And I keep thinking, why am I still talking about women coming into Rotary? And the reason I am is because there are women in Rotary today who didn't know that this was ever an issue. Yeah, that's true. They have just been invited, they have joined, they have become members, they serve right alongside men. In fact, uh, Rotary women are responsible, I think, for most of the detail that you see in, in Rotary clubs today, and, I, and men will tell you that. But I think, but they, no one had any idea that this was a, 
a civil rights issue when women were invited. So women serve no differently than men do, except they tend to take care of the little details and so on. A uh, funny story, the second year I was in Rotary, uh, district governor called and asked if I would do the four-way test, speech test, speech contest, because I was an educator and he right. thought I had access to kids. And I said, I said, sure, or just give me the records from last year and I'll do it. And he said, um, <coughs> <laughs> we didn't keep any records. <laughs> Right. So the speech contest that you see today was kind of recreated by me because there really were no records. And we just started writing things down and taking care of things. And that's what women do. Women work differently than men. And I, and I think men are responsible for moving heavy stuff and doing heavy stuff. Women who move heavy details and take care of those kinds of things. No, it's definitely so, true. Definitely but, true. They are, but they are equally as valuable in a club now as men. And I think men will tell you that too. Yeah. Definitely so. At least the men that have uh, women in the club, because without I the think, women there, yeah, work yeah I think get most done. of them do. I think most yeah. men uh, appreciate that, and they will tell you that. Now, yeah. what do you think the challenges um, are right now? Because we only have what twenty-two to twenty-seven percent. We what only actually we have thirty percent. Probably we have eighteen percent around the world. Thirty right. percent in the U.S. And I think. Rotarians have to be invited to join. It's probably just, you have to be careful about things like, remember when we had a concern that black people, for example, weren't getting into colleges and so mm -hmm. they had to move a little stuff around so mm -hmm. that blacks would be allowed to go into college, maybe lower scores, high school scores and so on, or being accepted. I think I think that's the thing that we need to watch with Rotary, is that inviting women, you invite capable people to be Rotarians, right. but think about women also, because sometimes when you're thinking about inviting somebody who's capable to be a Rotarian, you don't think it might be a woman. There might be a little bit of that. I mean, you don't want it to be a backlash that you're inviting women to join. You want people to join mm -hmm. Rotary. And in fact, when the Rotary Constitution was first written, it was written for people of integrity. And then it finally was it morphed into men of integrity. Now it's back to persons of integrity. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that all of us probably need to be aware if we want to make this world a place that's equally accessible to everyone, that we need to look also, if you have a club that has maybe 30 men and 10 women, well maybe we need to look for some more women so we have some balance in this club. Maybe there's a, there's a place for that, to have some balance. So, uh, and I think we need to be aware of it. We, um, we see a smaller percentage around the world mm -hmm. because of culture, cultural things, sure. you know, and, but we don't have those things here, at least we didn't until, <laughs> I don't know, I don't think we have those things here. But I think we need to probably pay attention to the fact that women are out there, they're accessible, and we need to invite them just to give some balance to what we're doing in Rotary. And I think, you know, the, the world is moving in that direction, too, mm -hmm. so. Uh, uh, do you think there are specific um, areas where you could attract, I, I would say, a specific group, uh, like women, in, into, from, from the community? Because we still don't see that, even leadership within the communities, for example, mostly still dominated by men in the lead roles within the government. Right, and we're a reflec reflection of the larger community. Yeah, yeah. We're a ref reflection of the larger community. When we talk about diversity in Rotary, and diversity also includes having male and female as well as all the other ethnic groups. And when we talk about that, that's when we need to pay attention to what we're doing. I think there is room, there is lots of room, uh, women do the same kind of work that men do today. They're women physicians, they're women construction workers, they're women teachers, they're men teachers. They do the same kinds of work. So the same places that produce men who become Rotarians are also have, are capable of producing women Rotarians. So mm -hmm. it's, it's just being aware. It's yeah. being aware. Yeah. And, I, and I think about myself too when I say that because um, I invite women because they're the first ones, as they're in my friends, they're my f sure. close friends. I don't have any close male friends 
Yeah, I do. <laughs> but I mean, what can I tell you? But you know, the women are the ones that are, are closer and the ones I'm more likely to invite sure. into Rotary. It's getting men to look at that too and say, hey, are you working with some women who you think are really capable and can do the work that's required to be a good Rotarian? You know, and women accountants, we have so many accountants. Yeah. Yeah. Women attorneys, we have so many attorneys. Yeah. You know, the, we invite them. We need to invite them. Now, how about um, your insight on this one? In Rotaract, it's about 80 percent, 75, 80 percent women. As it changes, that's just the young professionals. But then when it comes into Rotary, we lose almost all of them. Yeah, that, I wonder that, why that happens. I was, I, was, I was curious. I haven't figured that one out either. But the leadership of the young professionals is dominant, female. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I, and I, I think, haven't figured that one out either. That's what I was asking you. And that's probably Maybe because they that. probably because they're they're more attracted to joining clubs uh, at that level, and they carry over. You know, we've just begun to convince rotor actors, for example, that they can move right into rotary from rotor actor right. and places like that, from interact to rotor actor into rotary. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, women are more. You know, there are groups in colleges today, like uh, women's studies. I don't see any men's studies. So you get women's studies and you're going to get women who are going to go into Rotaract. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a focus on diversity, whether we're talking about gender diversity or mm -hmm. we're talking about ethnic diversity. Sure. And perhaps that's what is producing uh, some of the women that we see. That's true. You know? yeah. Yeah. That is a good point. Um, as far as challenges, and, and like you say, uh, as you said, civil rights, I notice in organization, specifically in Rotary, um, there's been or there is a very, I would say, even keel balance of civil rights. In other words, now that when we're in, if we take a look at ethnic diversity, that also presents there. So I personally, myself, I've seen very little discrimination as far as uh, ethnicity. Uh, you want to hear something interesting? In the last three months, I was a guest in Rotary clubs in Houston, Texas, in Jackson, Mississippi, and in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Those are th three clubs in southern states. Right. And actually, those clubs were more diverse than any clubs yeah. I have seen in yeah. California. Right. And perhaps it's that they have learned some lessons. Because we tend in California to think everything is okay, everything is okay, yeah, yeah. so we don't try to make any changes. They have found out that everything was not okay, and they have made some changes. And for me, it was fascinating to see the diversity in clubs in the heart of Dixie. True, true. Yeah. And that's fairly recent when yeah. I would say that. And, you know, we're talking yeah. decades and not that yeah. long ago that there were issues like that. Yeah. Um, which, again... Perhaps I, they've heard, learned some hard lessons. This is true, but I believe that it's also the organization uh, that Rotary actually yeah. lends itself to that yeah. kind of uh, growth. Well, Rotary International has put out a statement that, it says, that says that a club that represents its community right. in diversity, in gender, in ethnicity, in culture, and so on, is a club that's going to be successful in the world. So Rotary is, is trying to encourage that kind of look at what clubs are doing. So now that you uh, have accomplished quite a bit in Rotary, a lot, uh, becoming a governor, now a past district governor also, in leadership roles within the community, reflecting back, was that worth it? What you did? The, you you know, you a it? lot of times people ask, was it worth it? Was it worth what? We were <laughs> Rotarians and we did what Rotarians did. Yeah. We never had to fight. Actually, we didn't even have to testify in court oh. because the lawyers took care of that. We just continued to be Rotarians, what Rotarians did. And I have spent a lot of time in, and my kids will tell you that, <laughs> in the last 20 or 30 years running hither and yon for Rotary, whether it's in the community or out of the community. It's worth every single minute of it, every single minute of time that I've spent. I mean, I've spent time in deeper school in India, mm -hmm. you know, working with teachers there to make sure girls get an education. You know, here we are, education for girls and so on. Tell me, tell me where that isn't worth it. Yeah. We have everything to gain in the world from that. You know, I listened to the conversation today, and I listened to, I listened to a man from Pakistan talking about the fact that his, his daughters, uh, they don't raise them to go to school, they don't raise them to be educated, mm -hmm. they raise them to be, to be parents, to be mothers, and, and 
take care of the kids. But those girls today are looking for an education because to the extent that they are more educated than they have been before, their children will be more successful Definitely. than they have been before. Definitely. You know? That, that is true. Now, did you ever imagine when you first started that you would be changing Rotary and changing the world? No, and it's really interesting to me because it's, it's, <laughs> I've had to settle into, into, into this role because it, this was not what we anticipated. Right. And I said it's been more than 30 years and people are still talking about it. But I guess because it was one of the things that did change the world and is still changing the world. Right. Uh, today's world isn't okay. There are still things that need to be changed. Sure. Even in gender diversity, there's sure. still a lot of things that need right. to be changed. But as you said, it's... You it's, know, I mean, Hillary Clinton was the first female yeah. candidate Canada. for president. Yeah. Hey, look how long we've been a country. That's right. <laughs> That's What's right. wrong with that? <laughs> You know, so hopefully so Rotary won't take that long. <laughs> no, I hope so. I hope, we're hoping. No, I well, we have female directors yeah. now, and we've had female officers we, at International. Even and the I'm vice hoping president, we'll have a president. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, Ann Matthews was a Anne vice Matthews, president, too. Right. But um, I, think, um, I think we're getting closer to, the, to that, to uh, seeing a female president yeah. in Rotary. I, I see the leadership, uh, female leadership, as uh, one of those huge advantages that Rotary has. And as you say, Rotarians move up for specific reasons. It has nothing to do with gender or anything else. These are the true leaders. And the true leaders now are evolving, and that includes females and women yeah. in Rotary. And I think that benefits, it's going to benefit the world, um, being able to see it differently. I mean, and their leaders, they're, they're leaders that are a lot prettier than the men. <laughs> well, I could agree with that, <laughs> without a doubt. <laughs> well, you, I know you took a long time coming up here, and we sure appreciate your time. I mean, taking the Well, thank you for asking train. me. Thank you for asking yeah. me to do this. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have to say, uh, Sylvia, in meeting with you and spending time with you, uh, there couldn't have been a better person to move this forward because you did it for the right reasons. You didn't do it for civil rights. You did it because you're a Rotarian. And I think that's important for everybody to understand. Well, you know, uh, when Dick Key, and, and um, it's, I'm really sad about the fact that Dick didn't live to see all of this. You know, Dick, Dick died probably maybe five years after the Supreme Court decision, so he wow. missed all of this. But he was the man who was thinking ahead when he invited women. He sure. knew it was going to happen. Well, he had female principals in mm -hmm. his district, so he knew that, you know, that leadership wasn't well, going well, to Sylvia, thank you very much for your time, spending that with us and sharing it with the audience. Um, and uh, with that, everybody, thank you very much for joining us. I hope you enjoy the show. This is uh, one area where Rotary uh, could set the example for the rest of the world. And with that, thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Thank Cynthia, you. Great job. Thank you.